We are at the Museum of Mothering in New York, and this is Joy Rose. And Joy Rose, what do I call you? Are you the director of the museum? I'm the founding director. Wow. And it's the Museum of Motherhood. Museum of Motherhood. Okay, so the anagram is M O M Mom, of Correct. course. Yeah. Yes. Uh, cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I had never heard of a Museum of Motherhood. This is a complete new thing for me. And my friends in Australia are also wondering what this means. So it, it's fascinating. Please, please tell us your story. How did this come to be? Well, we are the first and only Museum of Motherhood. Um, and the idea, the inspiration, if you will, came from my own mothering experiences. And then my experiences in the sort of academic conference world and the performance world. And um, I came at this kind of uh, deep, vast subject, motherhood, right? How we've done it in the past, how we want to do it in the future um, from a real experiential place. And now I would say we're understanding more deeply by being here, um, not only other people's experiences, but also some of the theoretical. Um, and it's been a real fascinating journey. We've been here for 30 months since September 2011. And I believe you have a mission, don't you? There's, there's mm -hmm. a, a message that you're conveying through, through your museum. Yeah, so um, the message has to do with us looking um, at this thing that we sort of take for granted. 82% um, of the women in the United States will become mothers at some point. And um, so this is something that a large part of the population participates in, and yet it's something that we don't necessarily think about very much preconception. Mm. That's not to say that we don't go and take a birthing class or we don't um, look when we're babysitting at you know what the little kitties are doing, but our own um, experiences and expectations of what this journey will be like are largely unstudied, undocumented. Yeah. Um, and so we're here to put motherhood on the map to some degree. Yeah. Earlier on, you and I were speaking about that, and, and what you were saying to me is that there's been so little attention given to what goes on inside for mothers when they find themselves from one day to the next almost alone with, with a child for the first time, and it's such a revolutionary moment, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. With, it, with profound impacts. Profound yeah. um, personal changes, um, profound psychological changes, profound emotional changes, profound um, physiological changes, which continues. Um, and so um, this, uh, I love Maya, I believe it's Maya Angelou who said, you know, having a child is like walking around with your heart forever outside your body. So um, mm. who are you juxtaposed against this other person mm. next to your partner, the father mm. of the child, or in some cases, two women or two men who have chosen to parent. And, um, and, and this, this, this overreaching umbrella is changing all the time with new re reproductive technologies. So m all the more important that we understand who we've been in the past so we can better look at who we might want to be in the future. And I think we have to do that before we start the journey of actually popping out the kid because mm. once we pop out the kid, it's, a, yeah. it's a hard to keep up with Junior. You're, you're doing a lot of yeah. running for the yeah. next 20 years. <laughs> it's so demanding that there is, there's no longer necessarily enough space to reflect, reflect about the changes and, and, and what we do with the changes really. So having yeah. these kinds of conversations is actually part of our mission statement. Our right. mission statement is to um, start conversations, create thought-provoking exhibits, and educate and disseminate information and education around this mm. subject of women, mothers, families, and what, that's, what that looks like around mm. the world. Mm. Let, let me just rewind a little bit and then come back, mm. uh, because it occurs to me to ask you this. What, can you give us a couple of examples of what can people expect to see when they come down, to the, down the stairs? to this unique, unique museum. And people have, yeah. have said it's almost like we're in a womb here, you know? We, yeah, we go yeah, underground, and this is an underground yeah. movement. It's an underground academic movement with uh, some of the feminist mothers. And yeah. um, so in answer to your question, you walk in and uh, you'll see changing art all the time. We feature different exhibits by artists around the world. Uh, we have an uh, English exhibit called Story of Mum right now, as well as an American exhibit called Motherhood Later. Um, and then we have a room called the Womb Room, 
which houses our, wow. li our library. And you walk through the birth flag, so it's very experiential. You try on the pregnancy vest. We haven't done that with you yet. We have pregnancy <laughs> vests, so you can feel what that's like. Um, mm. And uh, we encourage people to wear the pregnancy vest throughout the whole tour of the museum. Uh, we have lots of original um, art, uh, from, again, from around the world. Australia, Ella Dreyfus. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, the not photographer. Not yet, not yet, soon um, to be. And uh, then we do a little bit of policy. Uh, so the United States uh, sits juxtaposed against uh, other nations. We're one of only three nations with no paid parental leave policy. Yeah. That could be changing hopefully soon. True. Um, mm. And so we talk about some of the policies around the world. We encourage people to get active, become activists. Mm. We tell them that they're hyper-local activists in their own families, that they are in the most influential position they can possibly be in. And so with that information, we then share global perspectives. We show a little bit of the culture of motherhood, which talks mm. about music, literature. We have a graffiti area, because not all stories are happy stories, and we encourage people to share their stories there. And we also have birth practices through the ages panels that talks a little bit about um, some of the shock and awe things that happened in the 10th and 11th century around, say, childbirth and mothering, um, all the way through the present day. Um, big, big sigh, big breath, and also a little bit of women and her story. So we have a suffragette sitting room tableau from the uh, movement here in the United States where women got the right to vote, and um, give a nod to Katie Stanton and Seneca Falls where all that started and a caregiving perspectives area. So all the things that you see are little stations, um, almost a vision board for all that we hope to do and create together in this subject. So when we get our own permanent facility, <laughs> which mm. we're working towards, this is mm. our, our sort of vision board, mm. then um, we hope to uh, continue to grow and develop each of these areas. Are you hoping for some funding, some sponsorship? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we've been largely self-funded. We do do conferences and yeah. other things that help support it. But yeah, we're looking for that angel and also writing grants and all that. Incredibly kind of a worthwhile project. Mm. Incredibly worthwhile project. And I know this from my own many, many years long fascination with the history of childhood. And it has so many ramifications. When people start to find out how parenting has not been a given, it evolves and it changes. Mm. And that there's probably no more powerful engine of social change than what happens in that little crucible of the family relationships. It's the yeah. launching pad for everything. For absolutely everything else. Mm -hmm. Sociologically, politically, foreign policy, the health of a nation, the, the planet, etc. So, um, so yeah. for all of those reasons, such a worthwhile project. And um, now do you have, in your own quiet time, what are your hopes, your, your, your cherished fantasies about what you would like to see produced as a result of the, of the work that you're doing here? Um, do you imagine that? What would you like to Absolutely. see happening for families, oh, yeah. socially? Mm -hmm. uh, I bet you have a list of... Uh, I do. I'll try to keep it short. Yeah. Um, I, I, really, I really believe in the evolution of humanity. So I believe mm. that by a better understanding where we come from, how that, what that looks like, um, by understanding that almost from academic perspective mm. as well. So mothering or motherhood is the one job, we say it's the most important job, and males can mother once post-birth, and eventually maybe someday they'll be able to give birth with all the changing technologies with reproductive things that are going on. But the idea that we can um, really study this thing. People say nothing can prepare you, but actually you can get prepared. You can have a better understanding um, uh, of the economic, the policy, the psychological, all the things that you mentioned. Mm. Um, so I'd like to see a whole area in universities that continue to study this mother studies, whether it's in women and gender studies mm. departments. I'd mm. like to see the museum in its own building, a rightful museum to, to rival or stand up next to any museum um, mm. and continue to be an international destination point and a collective where people can come together and um, share their research, share their, share their art, and share their authentic voices because we haven't really done that. We have, we've been interpreted, but we haven't really 
share those authentic experiences. Uh, yeah, for me, it feels like there's so much about parenting, mothering and fathering that happens in secret behind closed doors mm -hmm. in a place of, of social isolation. And um, I do feel that, that the role that parents have, because it is inescapably political, the, 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 the ripples that come from the way that we collectively nurture our children or fail to, those ripples are endless. Mm. Everybody feels the impact around the world for, um, of how every child is is related to, educated, raised, nurtured, uh, all of those things. So, you know, I, I really um, I concur with you about the need to uh, elevate uh, parenting to the role that it already really has in the sense of it being acknowledged. Does without or without yeah. the, without the cred or without um, yeah without the yeah. you know we were yeah. talking before and you were saying mm. how there are studies a lot of studies about say infant mother relations yes true there are but mm. um, I I also think that um, again going back to this preconception notion that can we um, get our students uh, jazz to think about how they want to create their future family situation. Um, because if we're not thoughtful, if we're not mindful, what we tend to do is either repeat or rebel uh, against what we've already experienced. So we're not really in a free place to... Yeah, that's still part of the same yeah. paradigm. Right. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. So, so in, in a sense, you're, taking, you, you're wanting to take isolation out of the equation for people and to replace that with more respect and, 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 and visibility for, for such an important... Uh, core role really in, in the health of a society as opposed to just yeah. you know in the past we biologically there was the biological imperative we had to reproduce because that's how our species how any species survives but less and less human beings are at that point of uh, biological necessity in fact we're overpopulated so um, to create uh, more thoughtful experiences but also to even suggest that um, it look if you don't know what to do with your life you're, you're kind mm. of floundering. What's the one guaranteed thing people do? They have a kid. And then they're like, oh, all right, I did something right. I had a child, you know. Okay, what if, in, what if we also um, took that thing that we just do and said, well, actually, um, it's not that different in some ways, uh, having a child, than so many other powerful things you can do on the planet. You can mother. A, you can passion passionately mother a project or an art or a, a so a, true bringing water to Africa yeah. or a, you know a meaningful mm. endeavor. Mm. And so we need to talk about that too. So we're not just habitually doing something that maybe uh, there's other ways to derive meaning in our lives. And there, yes, there is an archetypal maternal energy that can be applied in in, in every area of, of human relations, right? Mm. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Something else that, that uh, made me very curious about you. Um, I think you found the meeting place between mother, mothering and rock and roll yeah. in your life. Mm. And I'd love to hear a little bit about that. Yeah, so I, uh, I always played music, um, always sang in bands and here in New York City from the 80s on. And after I had children, um, rediscovered a whole new kind of art emerging from me, which was sort of the art of my daily life. And when I looked around, and this was in nine, the mid '90s, there was nothing. Um, there was there were no mom blogs. There was no mom art. There was no literature, really nothing, or, or mom rock, which we decided we needed to invent. So um, mom rock, which is uh, people taking their experiences, setting them to lyrics and music, and then going out and singing about it is not only a great way to blow off steam, but also to create new uh, archetypes and paradigms for um, being creative. So instead of hiding it, you know, I was a, if you're a you know, young musician or even middle a musician and you have a child, you would be like, oh no, I didn't. I didn't do that. It used to be like that. Now you might say, oh yeah, we're going out and tell the whole family's going to a gig and yes, I can rock and I'm a mom. <laughs> a lot of women in Australia, when, when they introduce themselves, if they're mothers and, and, and that's how they spend their day, I hear them say, I'm just, and that word just is so powerful. I'm just a stay at home mom. And even Stay at home is also a disempowering kind of language. You know, the body, 
body language that, that goes with it. That's a universal yeah. one because they say it here too. Is it the same here? Yes, and Robin, yeah. that's what it's about. It's like it, we have to take that mm. uh, that idea. I'm just a mom, and I don't know if we mm. do it. You know, I don't want to create licenses to become mothers. I'm not interested in legislating, but I am interested in educating because I feel if you had um, if you had certain knowledge that you felt secure in, while you, while you might not naturally be the most nurturing person, or you might not naturally come by, um, just like some people are gifted singers, right? And, and some people sing, but they might not be that gifted. Mm. The same with being taking care of a child. Some people naturally just will ooze love and compassion and kindness, and they're just so good with children, and they're natural. Other people, perhaps, um, education and training can empower mm. them to feel like, mm. Um, I have a right to this. This is a powerful role. This is an important role. This is something um, that has cred, and I'm doing it, and I feel good about it, as opposed to I'm just doing this, you know, thing. Yeah. So mothering rocks, huh? Mothering rocks. Mothering rocks. Yeah. Whether it's mothering a child, or mothering an organization, or mothering a project of some kind. Yeah. It's just that energy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it feels like. Um, this this place, the environment that you have created, is full of a very inviting mystery. Mm. You know, it's like an in utero underground space with a lot of story, a lot of story. And I haven't seen um, that much of it. I've just arrived very recently. I want to thank you for um, inviting me and allowing me to speak uh, at this venue tonight on Parenting for a Peaceful World. So great. And I think you and I are going to have a much longer conversation afterwards as well. There's quite an overlap in, in the work that we both do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, real pleasure to meet you. Thanks so um, much. I want to hear some of your music at some point. <laughs> okay. You have to tell me where to find it. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Joy. Thank you. Mm.